So now I can hope you can see with this like for like migration strategy that the task of migrating a firewall is absolutely doable, right? And with the right approach, right, like this like for like, you can also reduce the risk, right, to make sure this um, migration project really uh, is, a, is a kind of a smooth experience, which doesn't really break anything, okay? So now, to do the immigration now, you kind of you, you know the approach, you know how to do it, right? So now you just only need two more things. First of all, the migration tool, right? Because migrating thousands of rules and objects uh, manually is not really a task uh, uh, which 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 can be done easily, right? And secondly, you still need to know quite well the next generation firewall, right? So before I kind of give you now an overview on the migration tool, let me actually show you just a couple of the courses what I would recommend you to take. So when you go to our web page, consigas.com, if you go into trainings, you kind of get a list of all the kind of the, the, the trainings which are available. The first one, first course what I would highly recommend you is the Edu 201, right? This is really the fundamentals course which covers all of these next generation firewall uh, features and functionalities, right? Often people believe that, ah, oh, this is just a beginner's course. It is not, right? The Edu 201 really, again, like I said, is a fundamentals course, right? Even you have a lot of kind of, let's say, multiple, several years of, of firewall experience, you will take a lot out of this course because it covers all of the things, you know, which your classical legacy firewall doesn't do, like app ID, content ID, user identification, SSL decryption, right? And very important for immigration, uh, NAT, right? Because NAT is something uh, which is done, you know, every vendor does a little bit different, right? So does Palo Alto Networks. And it's something which, especially for your immigration, is something very important for you to understand. Another course which you might want to consider after this is then the Edo 231, the Managed Cyber Threats course, right? In this course, we then basically, you know, after you have done your migration, then you obviously want to implement all of the security best practices to really effectively uh, protect your network, right, with all of these fancy new features. And that's effectively the course uh, to take for this, right? Here, what we do is we basically explain how modern malware is working, right? And then also show you how to configure um, all of these uh, threat prevention techniques, what you now have on this next generation firewall in the right way, right to really securely protect your network okay so again these two courses probably you know would be the most important ones and later on you might want to consider as well the 802 311 as a troubleshooting course um, once you have kind of gained up of experience that's kind of also a course where um, we're always getting very good feedback uh, from uh, which is kind of really helpful okay so now with this <coughs> let's actually uh, go over and let me uh, show you uh, the migration tool okay so again it's a tool which you can receive from Palo Alto Networks free of charge so if you just go to actually let me show it to you as well if you go to live.paloaltonetworks.com right to the knowledge base from Palo Alto Networks and um, here you will find the uh, migration tools you can download it there are a couple of videos kind of explaining um, how it works uh, so kind of here, just kind of you can see there migration tool, and again you get the link to download it. You get some articles, documentation, um, <clears throat> and uh, also a couple of cool, good videos, kind of just giving you a kind of overview, right? So now. Um, here we have the migration tool, right? So basically you just install this as a kind of virtual machine on either, you know, your VMware uh, workstation or ESX, um, and then just kind of run this, okay? So now, um, the first thing what we want to do is just kind of add an, a project, okay? Just call this now here, uh, Consigas, in large database, and with this now, uh, um, we basically create a project to then import our configuration. Okay, so now the first thing what we want to do is import our configuration, right? So here we go to kind of this import tab. You can see here kind of all the different vendors which are actually supported, right? So you can see, you know, Checkpoint, Cisco, Juniper, SRX, as well as ScreenOS, Fortinet, Sidewinder, right? And, you know, if you have a kind of a vendor which is not supported, you know, if you are able to kind of uh, export your configuration, your rules in kind of a CSV format, then you can also import it from there. Right, um, so with this, you know, you can see a lot of uh, flexibility. So I have a kind of example configuration from Cisco. So I'm just gonna do Cisco. You can see based on the vendor, there are different types and files what you need to import. Right? Checkpoint is probably the most complicated one because you have kind of different files what you have to take from Smart Center server as well as from your firewalls um, to kind of import. Right, and um, Cisco everything is just one one file, so it's kind of an easier one. Right, so here it's gonna browse the the configuration. All right, and they're gonna start straight away uh, with the with the import and, and processing the, uh, the the configuration. All 
Okay, so now that the <coughs> firewall uh, configuration is imported, right? You know, the first thing you can see is kind of the, your 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 policy. Um, now, depending on how big your configuration is, this kind of entire process can take a while, right? You can see here my configuration is quite big, kind of, kind of close to thousand rules, um, right? So kind of here you can see then already kind of the entire uh, rule base. Now, again, um, <coughs> a rule base on a firewall, especially kind of the legacy classical firewalls, it is actually pretty simple, right? Because you have a, a source IP, a destination IP, and a service or kind of a port, right? And that's really it. Okay. Now on Palo Alto Networks, we can see there's one more additional thing. What comes on top is our zones, right? Now depending on the firewall you have, these zones uh, will already be pre-allocated, right? If you have Cisco, like in my case, and uh, it will basically use the um, interface groups uh, um, as as the um, as the name for for the zones, right? If you have checkpoint where there is no zones whatsoever. Then you can create zones, and based on a routing table, it will actually automatically kind of generate or kind of calculate itself. You know what zones should be allocated uh, to what rules. Okay, so again, this zone adoption, right? Uh, you can also do directly with the, the, the with, with the migration tool. Okay, so now the the first thing probably what you want to do before you start uh, of is actually here start with your network interfaces. Okay, so with this kind of routing symbol tab, here we have all the list of interfaces. You can see the interfaces are still named like the interface name what you had on your original configuration, right? Obviously on Palo Alto we don't have an interface called Gigabit Ethernet or something like this. So now what you can simply do is go in here and now basically do the, the interface mapping, right? So saying okay, let's say this I want to allocate to interface one, okay, uh, like that. And then you basically you know it applies uh, these new interface names directly to it. And um, so while I said you know we want to do a like for like migration, the interface mapping. Let's say the interface mapping on your old firewall is a little bit messy, and you want to kind of rearrange this a little bit. That's something what you can easily do here, right? So uh, so that's kind of something you know want to kind of when you clean it up. There's something where you can easily change the interface. Let's say this interface here, you say okay, you know this actually want to have you know the um, the inside LAN, I want to have it on Ethernet 3, right? And then let's say my uh, my DMZ, like this one here, right? I want to have this one on uh, Ethernet 2, okay? So with this, you know, I can easily kind of rearrange um, all of the interfaces and make sure kind of, you know, you have the interface mapping which you want to use on your new uh, firewall, right? Also things like sub-interfaces, like we see here, also this is possible, okay? No problem at all. You know, if you have a management interface obviously you know that's something where we have completely separate on our next generation firewall so something like this you know we just kind of can delete this interface so with this you know can do a kind of a, a quite kind of clean up uh, with, with, with all all the rules right you can see here also tunnel interfaces now that's something special to actually uh, Cisco configuration because in Cisco the migration tool also does support the migration of VPN tunnels Okay, so that's kind of a, a big plus. It is something where you should still kind of verify the, 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 the configuration and kind of all the settings, right? But in general, it's quite nice that you can actually, you know, uh, automatically migrate VPN tunnels as well. Okay, so other things we have are zones, right? So kind of again here, depending on what firewall you have, you know, these zones are kind of pre-named. If you want to rename them, let's say your inside um, zone, you want to kind of uh, maybe rename into office because that's your office network. Then let's say something like uh, outside. Uh, sorry, we need to allocate this visas. Okay, things like the <clears throat> outside zone you might want to kind of rename into internet because it's your internet connection, right? Again, these zones, by the way, there's, there's no nothing, no special zones. If you maybe have a bit of a background from Juniper, you know that there were kind of special zones with kind of special functions. On, on Palo Alto, you know, a zone is a zone, right? Um, you can, can name them what they are. Um, nothing, nothing special there, okay? God. So again, you know, something which you can then, you know, easily kind of clean up and, and, and do here as well. Uh, same for the routing configuration, right? As you can see here, our virtual router with all the, the routing configuration, all the interface which have in there, all of your static routes. So all of this kind of will be taken over. If you want to have to do kind of, you know, slight changes and customizations, you can always uh, do this then here as well, right? One thing, for instance, where you probably want to do route changes is when you configure your uh, VPN tunnels, right? Because remember on the Palo Alto, we have a route-based VPN versus kind of a policy-based VPN on most other vendors firewall so that's kind of something where you want to configure this here as well you can see here now in, in, in with our Cisco example um, the routes are already kind of created right and pointing to the right tunnel interface okay so again here you know it's quite advanced uh, on kind of you know uh, migrating this configuration which I think is uh, pretty nice I've done a really good job here okay the next thing you can look at as well 
<clears throat> actually your objects okay so you can see you know address objects group objects you can see all the services services are basically the ports right um, and you can see here classically that there are you know a lot of uh, uh, objects which are not used so you can see here kind of there's a red symbol it basically means that uh, this particular object is actually not used in the rule base so that's something you know where we can you know do a bit of a cleanup job as well okay so the first thing what you should always do especially when you change things like roots maybe you change things in your security policy as well right um, what you then always want to do first uh, before you do this cleanup is click here on this red icon just re to calculate all the used objects just to kind of verify which objects are used which ones are not used okay so and then from here then you basically click on the red dot right and basically remove all the unused objects so you can see here there was kind of a thousand seven hundred and thirty seven um, serve uh, address objects if I remove the unused ones you know kind of about a hundred less okay so on groups the same thing you know reduce them uh, probably on services here actually the services they are actually also deleted straight away as well right if you do this exercise it really kind of does it for address object services um, there as well okay so we can here you know also uh, drastically re reduce the size okay Good. And then obviously, you know, you have your kind of uh, security policy as well, which you can also verify. Um, now, <clears throat> here I only would you want to give you kind of a quick overview on the functionality. So you have seen it and kind of see what it is, right? Um, when it comes to the migration tool, there are a couple of more caveats and things you need to know, right, to, to make kind of a smooth migration, especially when it comes to NAT. You can see, for instance, here, a lot of rules are actually marked, right, because there's a corresponding NAT rule uh, to these rules. So that's kind of something where you should, you know, NAT rules is something which you usually do need to verify um, to see kind of that they're kind of, you know, were translated correctly because, you know, it is not kind of taking this from an existing firewall it's not always a you know kind of uh, fully explicit on you know what this would be then on the Palo Alto right so, uh, so that's something again where a little bit of kind of manual checking is always still still involved right but still you know looking at this right migrating all of these rules just at once and doing this manually would be a task which is you know I think absolutely impossible okay so let's say kind of once you're happy with your configuration, what you would then do is actually uh, import a base configuration. Okay, so a base configuration from uh, an existing Palo Alto, we can just use kind of an empty configuration. Um, what we always do is we have kind of a template configuration, which already includes a lot of our security best practices, uh, what we want to set up, right? So here in the Palo Alto tab, we can also also import uh, a Palo Alto configuration, uh, which kind of then, you know, goes in there in parallel. Okay, so you can see kind of um, when I just kind of switch over here from the, for the from the configurations. Okay, let's just give it a moment. So here we can see, you know, kind of here the initial configuration is in there. As part of our initial configuration, we already have a couple of rules as well, like, you know, accessing the firewall, inbound, outbound, firewall updates, you know, kind of all of the, you know, kind of common best practices what we would always implement in, in most customers, right? So here we're kind of this rule base, okay? So and now what we can do we go here to this um, exporting tab and now we can basically merge the two configurations right I can basically now say okay right all the objects from my Cisco configuration I now want to go into my Palo Alto configuration same for policies zones right and also the network configuration so here we can see you know my virtual router setup I want to move this over uh, the interfaces and then kind of our VPN configuration as well. Okay, so now basically you have kind of merged the configuration, right? You can basically say what you want to take over. With this, you can be very selective in saying, okay, what I want to take and other things I might, you, might, well, you might want to leave, right? So now I'm going to merge this. Good. So and now when we kind of here go again into our uh, security policy, what you will see is now that here we basically have now the entire rule base. Okay, so kind of the kind of 900 rules plus the rules where we have already defined. So you can see the first rules are the ones we had in our template configuration. And then below this, we have kind of all the rules where we imported from our Cisco configuration. Okay, so this is now important because, you know, um, <clears throat> while I said to you kind of from the migration strategy point of view, we want to do a like for like migration, there are still certain things from, from, from a feature and security point of view where we should actually enable straight away. 
okay especially kind of security profiles so this is kind of your, your antivirus anti-spyware vulnerability protection right um, it is safe enough to kind of you know uh, apply some base uh, security profiles here already to every single rule right so that you can make sure right even if you implement the firewall um, that you know these kind of basic things are already done right you know and again with such a high rule base there's something which you can do here in immigration tool which you actually cannot do on the firewall which is basically do a multi-edit of multiple rules right so here let's let me just uh, very quick add security profiles to the list. Actually, no, sorry, we have this here already, right? So now what I can do is here add a filter. So and let's say I'm interested in all the internet rules, so internet internet outbound. So I'm basically saying, okay, two equals uh, internet. So with this, you know, it would show me all of the rules um, kind of for internet outbound traffic. Okay, like this. Um, so, uh, and now, right, what I can do is, let's say here, I can now kind of mark all of these rules, right, and then do a multi-edit. And here in the multi-edit, I can now basically choose my kind of profile, right? I can kind of choose dedicated profiles, you know. Again, these profiles, where are they from, right? They were already defined in our template configuration, right? So that's kind of why we, you know, wanted to import the template configuration, our base configuration. Um, and there, the kind of these, these ones were already defined. Um, so, and now, you know, can define these ones. Usually what we really recommend is, you know, to apply groups to rules. So let's say for all the internet outbound rules, we apply a group internet outbound right um, and <clears throat> we just basically make sure that you know all of the rules are basically covered all of the rules have a security profile applied to it okay so now I can see all of the rules have one applied now this would have been a lot of clicking on the GUI if we would have to do this manually okay so again here we're using these filters you know pretty nicely you can you know uh, uh, separate this usually what we recommend is you know uh, kind of do different groups for internet outbound traffic internet inbound traffic uh, vpns or things like going to third parties um, as well as internal ones okay so this is usually kind of how we um, do the, the differentiation so once you're kind of happy with your configuration then you just go here again to the outbound tab and you basically can here now generate your configuration And now here on Palo Alto Network, similar to Juniper and, and Cisco, right? The entire configuration is just in one file. In Palo Alto Network says it's an XML file. So here we can, you know, just one XML file. Uh, we can uh, just save. And then import into our uh, next generation firewall. So now here on our next generation firewall, right? We now only need to go onto device, setup, operations, right? You go back import this XML file, right? Will be stored on the desktop. Okay, so we import it and we just load this configuration and then have it. Now, this will now give me a lot of, a lot of errors because obviously I didn't really finish my configuration, right? Remember, I didn't really finish the interface allocation, so all of these ones didn't work. There's a lot of stuff where from, from, from with, with the mapping for the for the uh, gateways and things that there. So again, you know, obviously we need to kind of uh, finish our configuration and, and do it proper. But the good thing is, you know, you import it here, you can already see, you know, if there are errors, which you can then go back to the migration tool and, and fix them. Right. Similarly, then when you kind of do a commit or a validate, right, you can also see any errors. And it is again at a stage where your firewall is still not connected to your network, right? You only access it via the management interface. You apply the configuration, you verify the configuration um, until you're happy that everything is there, right? So kind of if we look here in our security policy. Right, all the rules are there. You can verify them, right? All the objects. Um, so I think you know you can see um, the migration tool. As a pretty awesome tool, really making our job for the firewall migration significantly easier. I hope you found this information helpful, and if you have any feedback or ideas on how we can further improve these best practices, then feel free to leave a comment. And don't forget, if you need any help, then one of our engineers would be more than happy to assist you. For more information, check out the consulting section on our webpage, where you can also find a contact form to get in touch. This was the first of a series of Palo Alto Network's best practice videos, which we will share over the coming months. So check out the blog 
on our web page for more. Here we have already shared our network security best practice document uh, where we, based on the cyber kill chain, explain how a hacker could potentially uh, attack your data center or end user device and also the security best practices and um, uh, threat prevention techniques which you can use to protect yourself. With this, thanks for watching and maybe talk to you soon at one of our Palo Alto Networks trainings. Thank you.